The death toll passes 100 in China. I am joined this morning in this hour by Representative Debbie Lesko of Arizona's 8th Congressional District. You can follow her at Rep. D. Lesko, L-E-S-K-O. She is among the president's defense team from the House. Representative Lesko, welcome back to the Hugh Hewitt Show. Thank you for having me. Tell me what the, the House group is. What is your role and in, in who got picked and how do you carry out the defense duty since you're not on the floor with the with the president's defenders? Yeah, there's eight of us from the U.S. House of Representatives that were selected by the White House and President Trump to serve on his impeachment defense team. And our major role thus far has been to communicate uh, the message that President Trump has done nothing impeachable and that the uh, Democrats in the House of Representatives has not proven their case. And that's the overall message we go to. I've been on uh, different media, such as yourself, uh, but also locally in Arizona. Um, I have talked to different groups, different uh, media outlets. And then, of course, in the breaks uh, in the Senate trial, Uh, We talk to media as well. So, so far, that's been my major role. Now, there may be more of a role that takes place when the senators start asking questions, perhaps questions about what exactly happened in the House, those type of things. Now, talk to me a little bit, uh, Congresswoman Lesko, about the Bolton book revelation. How did that impact your defense? Well, it didn't impact my defense at all because the the evidence that has been presented by the House did not even come close to proving an impeachable offense. Uh, and this is the timing of this is very suspect. Uh, same thing that happened during the Kavanaugh case. Uh, you know, somebody leaks out something that I guess is opposed to President Trump or maybe to try to influence a book sale. I'm not sure in this case. Uh, But, you know, it is, again, nobody has read, well, at least nobody that I know has read this uh, draft transcript of a book, yet the New York Times just happens to get it uh, right before we go back into the Senate trial to try to influence the Republicans in the Senate to call for more witnesses. It's very suspect uh, and very political, quite frankly, just like this whole impeachment thing has been political. It has nothing to do about this call. I mean, they would have found something else if they didn't find this call. If you remember, uh, Adam Schiff for, what, two years claimed that he had evidence that President Trump had colluded with Russia to influence the 2016 election when the Robert Mueller special counsel uh, report came out, uh, they determined that was not accurate and that he had been spreading falsities for two years. And then they, then the, when that didn't work, they switched to obstruction of justice. Remember during the Robert Mueller report thing, they put up all kinds of slides saying there was 10 articles or 10 instances of obstruction of justice. That flopped. Then they happened upon this call. And so now they've made this into the impeachable offense. And if um, people would remember, there have been multiple uh, introductions of articles of impeachment since the president has been elected. And in fact, six out of the seven Democrat House managers uh, that are sitting on the floor of the of the Senate uh, already publicly supported, either voted for or publicly supported impeachment before the Ukrainian call. Now, uh, Congresswoman Lesko, Senator Cotton was on just before you. He said if it comes to witnesses, he would like to hear from five. The whistleblower, uh, Representative Schiff, Representative Schiff's assistant who spoke with the whistleblower first, and both Bidens. Um, I understand the Democrats want to hear from Bolton. Would you tell me as a matter of just record, did the Republicans request any of the five, uh, the whistleblower, Schiff, Schiff's assistant, or both Bidens during the House proceedings? The answer is yes. Um, I know for sure that they requested Schiff. Um, They requested Hunter Biden, if my memory serves me. I don't know if they requested Hunter Biden's assistance. I'd have to look assistant. Schiff's, I'm sorry, it was Adam Schiff's assistant who spoke with the whistleblower. That's who Tom Cotton wanted. Yeah, and so I think that would be a a good request. Um, But I do know that the Republicans in both the House Intelligence Committee and the House Judiciary Committee, of which I serve on, requested witnesses 
uh, and were denied. The only ones that the Republicans got in, the, in judiciary were the same ones, or not judiciary, intelligence committee, were the same ones that the Democrats already had on the list. They wouldn't allow us any other witnesses. And so to me, it's very hypocritical when the Democrats now, who decided not to call witnesses, they could have subpoenaed John Bolton. They chose not to. Now they go over to the Senate and say, oh, my goodness, this would be a cover-up if we didn't hear from John Bolton. I mean, that's very disingenuous since they didn't bother. So the uh, Democrats, in the House. I just wanted to make sure on the record as well, the Democrats did not call John Bolton in either the Intel Committee or the Judiciary Committee. They they chose not to subpoena him. Um, I think they requested him, and then when he said no, they just gave up on it. They didn't bother to follow through and go forward with the subpoena. So the predicate for all of this debate this week, which will occur on Friday and Saturday, is that the House Republicans requested at least the whistleblower, Adam Schiff, and Hunter Biden, I believe. I don't know if you requested the vice president. At least three that were turned down you did not get— and the Democrats did not subpoena John Bolton. Now they want to flip it and deny you the same witnesses in the Senate, but require Bolton, who they did not subpoena in the House. Am I right? That is, that, that is absolutely correct. And that shows how political this is. It's very political. The whole thing's political. They've been wanting to impeach the president uh, since he got elected. And there's been record of that publicly, of different uh, Democratic uh, congressmen and um that have said that he has to be impeached. This is this all. This is really, quite frankly, is an attempt to influence the 2020 election. I mean, think about it. You had to rush the Pelosi and Schiff and Nadler had to rush through these articles of impeachment before getting subpoenas for witnesses that they claim they now need because before Christmas because they said it was a national security risk if we didn't rush through it and do these articles of impeachment before Christmas. Then Nancy Pelosi sits on it for 33 days, which kind of undercuts her whole urgency of national security. And now they claim that they need these witnesses or the Republicans are doing a cover-up. I mean, how ridiculous is that? Unfortunately, unlike your radio show, Most of the media just buys into this Democrat stuff, and most of America just hears a one-sided story. They're not covering a lot of uh, Trump legal team's uh, talking points. All they're talking about when I go out is asking questions about Bolton and why can't we talk to Bolton. I mean, they're using totally the Democrats' talking points, and so it's it's a little lopsided in the media. Representative Debbie Lesko, keep coming back. I appreciate it very much. Follow her on Twitter at Rep. D. Lesko, part of the president's defense team from the House, and she is very good at it. Thank you, Congresswoman, from Arizona's 8th Congressional District.